Hello everyone, welcome back to the kitchen and today we'll be making this extremely chocolatey fudgy brownie. This brownie recipe has chocolate inside and out so it is extremely dense and extremely chocolatey. So let's get started! You want to melt half of your chocolate over a double boiler or a small saucepan with shimmering water over medium low heat. I'm adding in my melted butter. I have added all my butter into a separate pitcher and microwave it for about a minute. So all of the butter will melt it and it will be easier to combine with the chocolate. The warmness of the butter will help the chocolate melt better and it will combine into this very nice smooth velvety mixture. After all of your chocolate has been melted and combined with your butter, you can take it off the heat and set it aside for it to cool about 5 to 10 minutes. Now I'm prepping my topping chocolate so I can top it off on my brownie batter when I start to bake it. If you want to, you can just chop up all of your chocolate beforehand and just use half for the brownie and then half for topping. But here I'm using um, Hershey's Kisses and these are the hot chocolate ones. So as you can see outside it is milk chocolate and inside is like a marshmallow flavor. I love these. These were the holiday editions and I still kept them. And so I decided I want to use them to decorate my brownie on top when I start baking it. So right here I'm using half dark chocolate that I chopped up already and here are my hot chocolate kisses Hershey's that I also chopping up and I'm going to use it to top off my brownie batter when I start to bake it. In a separate bowl, add in your sugar and your cocoa powder and then whisk them thoroughly until they are combined. When the mixture has come together, you will add in your eggs one at a time. It will get really tough to whisk them in at the beginning, but gradually as you add in the egg, it will start to loosen up and turn into a very nice batter. Add your cocoa powder and egg mixture into your chocolate and butter mixture and fold them in until both batter has combined. As you're mixing through your brownie batter, you will start to see that it's getting very heavy and that is totally alright because this is a very dense brownie recipe. Now add in your remaining dry ingredients and start whisking through the flour. You want to use a whisk in this process just to help with all the little lumps of the flour. You don't want any little lumps of flour left unbaked in the brownie afterwards. So this will help you work through the little lumps and chunks of the flour and help your brownie batter be as smooth as possible. As you can tell that this brownie batter doesn't have any baking powder because it's not going to rise much. With the amount of chocolate and flour in this brownie batter, it is going to be a very thick and dense and heavy brownie. So it doesn't need any components to help rise. 
When your brownie batter is ready, you want to transfer it to a baking pan. I'm using a 9 by 9 inch cake pan that is lined with parchment paper and I spray it with a little bit of butter spray. It's just to help the brownie get removed easily after baking. With an offset spatula, I'm just going to spread the brownie batter out into the pan so it will bake evenly because it's obviously a very dense batter and it won't spread. So if you're just going to lay it into the pan like that, it will just going to bake in that one area. So this process helps distribute the batter evenly into the pan. Finally, the magic moment when you sprinkle on your chocolate. With the amount that's listed in the recipe, of course you can alter it to make it a little bit more or a little bit less. It is up to you and your preference. Another good option would be to sprinkle some sea salt on top to contrast with the dark chocolate. But if you don't want to, you can use just plain milk chocolate or dark chocolate. Even white chocolate would work. It is, again, up to you. And I think these options all work and just let your creativity flow. You will bake the brownies at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour. Yes, it takes a little bit long, but keep in mind the amount of ingredients that went into this brownie. So it does take a little bit longer to bake. After it finished baking, you want to let it rest for about 30 minutes before serving it. It will still be warm, but the 30 minutes is just to let it sit and firm up because if you try to cut into a brownie after baking it immediately, it will start breaking into parts and bits, and that's not what you want. So 30 minutes and just let it sit and firm up, and once you cut into it, it will still be warm and delicate. The best way to test if the brownie is ready to be served is just to cut the corner piece of it to see if it doesn't fall apart or if it's too hot to be cut into. And then you will start to split the brownie in half and then in fourth and then does it the other way and then you will have perfect squares for your brownies. The brownies are dense and heavy and extremely chocolatey, so I suggest when serving it, you cut it into smaller pieces and serve it with a glass of milk because it is extremely, extremely hard to finish unless you're like a chocoholic. And that is it for my video today. And thank you so much for watching this video. And if you like my channel, please don't forget to subscribe below and leave a like below. Thank you so much.